So my name is James Rupert. I'm an assistant professor here at the School of Meteorology at University of Oklahoma. So I'm from a place called Huntington, New York, uh, which is in Long Island. And I grew up there experiencing um, afternoon thunderstorms, a uh, tropical storm coming through Long Island every now and again. Um, I wasn't there for Hurricane Sandy, but this did impact my family and uh, had a big impact on me as, as a meteorologist today. Uh, so I received my undergraduate degree in atmospheric science from the University at Albany, um, which has an excellent program um, in meteorology and atmospheric science. Um, and then following that, I went to Colorado State University, which is in Fort Collins, Colorado, where I received my master's and PhD degrees. So after I finished my PhD, I was really interested in going abroad. So I, uh, I took a, a postdoctoral fellowship at the Max Planck Institute for Meteorology, which is in Hamburg, Germany, um, which is an institute that's, they're called the Max Planck Institute for Meteorology, but really their, um, their main focus is understanding the atmosphere um, as, well, the atmosphere and Earth system um, as a, an entire climate system. And so it was sort of a different approach, a different um, context for studying uh, this field um, that was distinct from more um, forecast-oriented and application-oriented um, problems in meteorology uh, that I had been trained on before. So it was sort of a new experience and a new view into this field. My interests are on all things convection and clouds. Um, I'm really fascinated by how things at the weather time scales interact with climate. And by that I mean, um, you know, weather being sort of the day-to-day -day, um, storminess or lack of storminess um, in a given period of time and how that feeds back onto climate time scales, which is on a longer time horizon, um, and how those things determine uh, sort of the general pattern of things on a longer time horizon. Um, so that's kind of generally, uh, in a general sense, what fascinates me. Um, and this, the specific research uh, that I'm doing uh, right now and that I'm really excited about is on uh, tropical cyclones, in fact, so hurricanes. Um, one of the things we've learned is that the radiative footprint of clouds of a developing tropical disturbance uh, have a really important implications for their subsequent development or not. Um, so for example, um, what we know as the greenhouse effect in terms of water vapor CO2 and methane on a global scale, um, while the clouds of a developing tropical disturbance also have a localized greenhouse effect that's much stronger locally. Um, now I'm not talking about that in the context of climate, but what this localized cloud greenhouse effect does is it, it slightly increases the heating in the region of, a, um, of the developing disturbance. And then that disturbance is able to draw from that heat and form a bit more rapidly than if that, uh, if that cloud radiative feedback uh, didn't occur. Um, and another context um, in the tropical cyclone problem is um, something that we've begun to recognize is a really important um, aspect of tropical cyclones is the di their diurnal cycle. Um, this is basically like a, a heartbeat on a 24-hour time scale, and in essence, it's driven by the rising and the setting of the sun. Um, and what the rising and the setting of the sun does is it's heating the top of clouds um, through solar radiative heating um, over certain times of day, and then, of course, there's stronger cooling at night from cloud tops. Um, and we're just beginning to understand what the impacts of that diurnal cycle um, that, what those impacts are in terms of precipitation and what their implications are for tropical cyclone development. Um, but this is sort of a fascinating area of, of research to me um, and sort of adds testament to the, um, the importance of these sometimes subtle radiative feedbacks um, in the atmosphere for something uh, so strong like a tropical cyclone. So I'll be teaching this fall undergraduate Dynamics 1 and then Dynamics 2 in the spring, which for me is a dream come true. It was uh, my favorite classes when I was an undergraduate. Um, so it's about um, some of the first steps of when we take the calculus that we learn um, from our math courses um, and begin to really apply that uh, to understanding fluid dynamics as applied in the atmosphere. And then down the road, I plan to be teaching uh, advanced tropical dynamics and as well as classes on uh, numerical weather prediction and numerical modeling. I got into meteorology, I would say I'm somewhat unique from some of my meteorology colleagues in that um, I didn't grow up as a kid knowing that meteorology and weather was everything I wanted to do. Um, I was always fascinated by, by thunderstorms and um, tropical weather systems when they would come up the, the East Coast, but um, more so I knew that I wanted to be in science for a career. Um, 
But it was when I was at university at Albany and started my degree in meteorology um, in, in my undergraduate program that I really became drawn to this field as a really fantastic application of physics, of math, um, and an opportunity to really understand how the world ticks um, looking up into the sky. So I always thought it was really fascinating um, that I could learn things in the classroom and then go outside and understand things that I see day to day a little bit better. Um, and especially that was the case once I began learning about severe weather, um, which is a common occurrence both in uh, the Front Range, Colorado, as well as uh, here in Norman, Oklahoma.